Well, welcome. Another one of our prototypes is a uh, is our CPR module whiteboard, and we're going to use it here to review uh, spirometry, obstruction, uh, restriction, and diffusion capacity. Now, just for a review, for spirometry, you have a volume of air on the x-axis, flow of air on the y-axis, and that's liters per second. Now, when you breathe out. The amount of air that uh, the sensor detects when you blow increases um, and the volume goes out of your lungs or decreases. When you breathe in, the volume in your lungs increases and the flow rate is negative. So with me now, you breathe in, <gasps> you slow down as you get more full and now you're full, okay, and then you breathe out, Whew. and you breathe out all that air. And that's, uh, that's what a pretty normal flow volume look, loop looks like. Breathe in and then breathe out. But let's take a look at somebody with, uh, say, obstruction due to COPD or asthma. Okay, so you breathe in just fine, but when you breathe out, whoo, you wheeze a little bit. You have trouble getting that air out. The overall flow rate is low, and it's more um, uh, the flow rate is reduced all along. And the more concave this loop is, the more severe the obstruction. So the forced expiratory volume in one second, the, the rate of air you get out in that first second, is low. And your forced vital capacity, or the total amount of air you blow out, is normal. So your ratio is low. Now low is best defined as what's outside the normal range for your uh, age and size and ethnicity and gender. But for test purposes and most purposes, it's less than 0 0.70. Now how about restriction? For restriction, look, your volume is uh, lower, or at least the machine, as you blow, senses it as being lower. And then the amount of air you get out, uh, the flow rates are normal to high because compliance is low. So a low FVC should make you suspicious for restriction. The ratio itself will be normal or high. Let's start with obstruction again. So remember, uh, schematically, you have your airways, which don't participate in gas exchange. We call that dead space. And then you have the uh, lung itself, which we can represent with this balloon here. Now, with obstructive lung disease, your airways, think of your airways as being uh, narrow. And that can be due to smooth muscle constriction around the airways. It can also be due to uh, edema of the airways, infiltration of uh, immune cells, uh, scarring, mucus deposition. But basically, because of that narrowing, uh, you have trouble getting air out. So again, your FEV1 will be low. Your FVC will be uh, normal. Uh, and then your ratio is therefore uh, low. Now, there's another way, of course, uh, physiologically, why you have trouble getting uh, air out. Uh, and that's in the setting of uh, uh, emphysema and air trapping. And you can envision the air pressure uh, inside the lungs being so high that it uh, pinches off those uh, flexible airways, especially when they lose their elastic recoil from emphysema. And again, you have trouble uh, getting the air out. All right. Well, how about uh, restriction? I mean, there's a few. Uh, uh, different ways to think about that, and restriction is a little bit different. You know, when you let your uh, your air out, you're at this expiratory reserve volume. When you take a deep breath in and out, in and out, that's your tidal volume. Your lungs get a little bigger and then a little bit smaller. If you take a super deep breath in, as as much as you can, that's your inspiratory reserve volume. Okay, so that's uh, you've taken a full, a pretty full breath. Let's say you take a deep breath in as much as you can, and then you breathe it all the way out. Let out all the air you can. Push, 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 push that air out. You never completely leave out all your air, um, and what you're left with is that residual volume. Now this gets to why you can't confirm restrictive lung disease or restriction with just spirometry. In these two uh, lung examples, the forced vital capacity is the same, but the residual, residual volume 
is uh, much lower on the other. How can you measure that residual volume if you can't breathe all your air out? Well, there's one way you can do it. Put people in that phone booth, that uh, glass and case box. And if you can provide a shutter to block airflow, then you can measure uh, pressure and volume. When your lungs get bigger by breathing in, the, the space or volume of the gas in the box with you goes down. And essentially, um, conservation of pressure and volume allow you to determine the volume that's left in your lungs. The other method is this uh, helium or nitrogen dilution. And essentially, you have a known concentration of uh, helium in a tank. You have the patient breathe in, and that helium kind of disperses and equalizes everywhere. And you know your starting concentration and your ending concentration in your canister, so that allows you to measure the volume. All right, total lung capacity. Your inspiratory capacity and your expiratory reserve volume make up your vital capacity. And that other stuff is your functional residual capacity. Now those are competing forces there. Basically, it's your uh, elastic compliance of the lungs and chest walls and your muscles uh, in action. For pulmonary fibrosis, scarring of the lungs, you see the total lung capacity is truly reduced. And really all your lung, your lung compartments are reduced. How about neuromuscular weakness? You just can't breathe that air out. So your residual volume, as you can see, is pretty high. You have a large residual volume left over because you can't breathe the air out. Obesity, your lung compartments are reduced. All these volumes that you can measure, especially your expiratory reserve volume. And how about for uh, COPD? With air trapping, your total lung capacity could be 150% of normal, as you can see. Your vital capacity may still be uh, low, however, and that's what we refer to as pseudo-restriction. Uh, now, neuromuscular weakness, a couple other clues. Your mean um, inspiratory pressure, or how much air you can suck in, and your mean expiratory pressure, how much air you can blow out, are both reduced uh, in significant neuromuscular disease, as you can imagine. So that's a clue. All right, diffusion capacity. Remember, it's not just the lung. There's the blood there, too. And it's this interface that allows the exchange of gas. We give patients minuscule amounts of carbon monoxide to test this barrier. And hemoglobin has such an affinity for carbon monoxide that it all gets sucked up. No carbon monoxide gets exhaled. And we, re and we view this as good as good diffusion of gases. Now you can envision if there's fibrosis or interstitial lung disease, edema, a thickened pulmonary artery, that carbon monoxide can all get into the blood, some gets exhaled, and then the diffusion capacity seems low. At least that's what we uh, suspect. Now how about uh, other circumstances? Let's say there is anemia. If you don't have that much hemoglobin, you're not going to be able to bind the normal amount of carbon monoxide. Some gets breathed out, and it appears that you may have a diffusion impairment. That's why if you're concerned about testing for lung disease, you adjust for degree of anemia. And then finally, if there's alveolar hemorrhage, blood in the airways, your diffusion capacity will look great because all that hemoglobin will suck up any carbon monoxide that might be there. All right, here's some examples. Fibrosis, the lungs are really scarred and, and uh, just uh, tiny, shrunken down from different diseases. You could have a pleural effusion or pleural thickening that affects your lung volumes, as you can uh, see here. Obesity affects your lung volumes. You can envision just having to move all of this extra adipose tissue. Now, people who are muscular don't have this problem because their uh, respiratory muscle strength is improved. And then neuromuscular disease, their residual volume is really uh, uh, high. They just can't breathe out uh, the air. And here we are, like we talked about with COPD, you can have air trapping that makes your FVC low, force vital capacity low, but your total lung capacity high. All right, so all these conditions, by definition, the force vital capacity will be low. That's why you're testing them for uh, restriction. 
total lung capacity is low in a lot of them except for COPD. Now your diffusion capacity will be in the toilet with fibrosis because of the damaged lungs. But muscle weakness, the lungs themselves are normal so the diffusion capacity will be normal. Um, and it won't, the diffusion capacity will be relatively normal um, in different conditions except for emphysema where the interface between the airway and the blood is also damaged. And as for clues, you're going to see a fibrosis or interstitial lung disease on your x-ray or your CT scan. For muscle weakness, because there's no uh, strength to push out that air, you're going to have a high residual volume. And those MIPS and MEPS will be low also. For obesity, look for the low uh, expiratory reserve volume. Uh, keep in mind that heart failure can present with a low F force vital capacity on spirometry. Um, and then for COPD, you're going to have that low FEV1 to FVC ratio.